Articulation. We all want it when we go off-road, and there's a lot of ways to do it. One of those ways is through the sway bar. And in this video, we're gonna find out which way do you sway. Hey everybody, it's Bubba with X's Jeeps, and we custom build badass Jeeps. Well, day's finally come, and we'll get to go off-road again tomorrow. But before I do, I wanna install something cool on the Gladiator, give me a little bit more flexibility without sacrificing stability. And that's the sway lock system from off-road only. This is a great product, American made by the guys up in Minnesota. As you can tell, you get in here and look at these parts, they're pretty robust. Pretty cool, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. What is the sway lock? What is the horseshoe? Well, it's a dual rate sway bar system. So let me back up a little bit. There's three types of sway bar systems, give or take, that you could put on the Jeep Wrangler or Gladiator. And let's talk about the first one. That's the original sway bar that comes on the Jeep from the factory. As you can see, this little B stock Jeep with its stock wheels and tires was able to get some great flex up up on this big rock without spending any money on sway bar disconnects or sway bar of any kind. All they did was simply take their 18 millimeter wrenches, take the factory bolts out on the axle side, throw the bolts in the glove box, zip tie the sway bar up out of the way, and they're off on the trail getting great flex, enjoying their wheeling without spending any money at all, hardly. It's pretty rigid. It's designed to keep you stable on the highway, going into turns, or wind, and stuff like that. But it doesn't offer a lot of flexibility off-road. So most people will buy quick disconnects from somebody like, say, JKS. This Jeep right here, he's got JKS quick disconnects on him. Super popular, relatively inexpensive way to disconnect your factory sway bar without having to mess with wrenches and zip ties and you know losing bolts and all kinds of stuff. Tons of stuff. You simply pull some pins, move the sway bar links up out of the way, and you're ready to go wheeling fully disconnected, getting some great articulation. You can see that he removed the sway bar links completely, pulled that sway bar up and zip tied it up so it wouldn't be flopping around all day while he's out on the trails. This is a really relatively inexpensive way to disconnect your sway bar easily those retail for about 160 bucks for a pair and they're super easy to install probably one of the best easiest cheapest ways to gain a lot of flex out of your jeep without breaking the bank that allows them to totally disconnect the sway bar manually they have to get out undo some clips pull those sway bar links off the axle fold the sway bar up out of the way zip tie it with three or four different zip ties on each side then at the end of the day when you're done wheeling you got to cut those zip ties Get the Jeep almost perfectly level. And if it's not, then you gotta get somebody on one side, jump it up and down to get those links back on. Kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not a big fan of it, but hey, if you're up to it and you like doing it, you've been doing it for a while, hey, good for you. Then there's the Rubicon sway bar. That's the one that comes standard on all Rubicon models, whether you're Wrangler or Gladiator. It's great, you push a button, motor disengages, and all of a sudden you're disconnected on both sides offers a lot of flexibility. Next up is another JKU with some Evo bolt-on coilovers on the front and rear, and he has a Rubicon sway bar. Now on this one, his electronic motor quit working, so he runs an Evo No Limits knob. Now that's a pretty cool because when that electronic motor, maybe the wiring gets damaged or whatever reason, you can't use the electronic part of the sway bar anymore. Or let's say you have a sport Sahara and you buy somebody's Rubicon sway bar off of them, but you don't have the electronics inside the cab to turn it on and off. Well, then you simply just buy one of those Evo No Limits knobs, bolted in place electronic motor. It allows you to use the Rubicon sway bar the same way, but without the electronics. In his case, the motor failed on him, so he just bought the No Limits, bolted it up. And as you can see, he's flexed out. Got some great flex, great articulation. It looks great. He's still fully connected with the sway bar links, but the disconnect has allowed the two pieces or sections of the sway bar to operate independently of each other, allowing him to get all that flex. The other option would have been a Curry anti-rock sway bar system. Did you go beep? Yeah, is it county? Mm -hmm. All right, the next up is the Curry anti-rock. This is a tried and true sway bar system that's been around for a long time. Super popular, very fun off-road, but it still offers great articulation. Right now, we're gonna pull this red JK up on there. Jasmine, at this point, my camera girl has, has ran off. Okay, now as you can see, we were able to climb up on this rock without having to disconnect any of the sway bar links while still getting maximum traction and articulation. Still better than having to fully disconnect a sway bar, like if you had a factory sway bar, like a Sport Sahara, but not quite as fully disconnected as say a Rubicon sway bar either. Those are pretty cool. They offer a lot of flexibility. They don't leave you completely disconnected, but 
they can be a little bit too flexible on the highway going into turns and stuff like that. So I'm not really crazy about that. That's where the sway lock comes in. We're gonna show you what it looks like on the JK platform and how well it articulates. This Jeep is running a Evo three inch lift with King shocks, really smooth riding, comparable to the coilovers that you've seen in the other parts of the video. Let me show you what kind of flex you get with that on the JK. As you can see, great flex, great articulation on, the, on this rock, and he's still fully connected. Basically, we get this really big rigid sway bar. So when we're in regular on-road use, this keeps us from being too flexible. And then you got the other one that goes inside of it, this torsion bar, much like a Curry and a rock. It goes inside of here. You'll see when we do the install in a minute. Basically, when this mechanism here is disengaged, these two pieces turn independent of each other and you get really flexible without being totally disconnected off-road or super rigid for highways so you're not too flexible there either. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually show you how when we flip the lever and when the Jeep becomes level again, how it's gonna snap back into that single rate highway use mode. So follow me. Simply flipping the lever forward here. Boop. All right. Now let me have the camera again. All right, Jonathan, back down. and it's locked into place and now in single rate mode and as you can see when we back down as soon as those two arms line back up with each other the lever slid forward back into place and it locks both arms into each other putting us into that single rate highway use mode if that isn't fancy enough for you off-road only also offers an air cylinder that mounts right there you put another air solenoid on your air compressor run that switch inside or put on your switch pros s pod whatever you got in there and at the push of a button you can disconnect or reconnect your sway bar just like you could on a Rubicon. We're gonna rack the Jeep, the Jeep truck up, get it up in the air, and let Blake start installing it. Let's get to work. So far, I have the mounts in place normally where the factory sway bar would have mounted. But if you pay attention closely, you'll see that I put these three inch aluminum blocks in place. That's because we have the hamburger supercharger installed and the oil cooler for that supercharger is right here right where the normal or regular factory sway bar would have gone, or in this case, even this one. So we had to put these big blocks in. I had to go search and dig around town for some metric bolts that were long enough. Turns out I couldn't even find any. I needed some like 140 millimeter long. I ended up having to buy some all thread. Probably at some point I'll replace all this with some gray 10 metric hardware, but I'm gonna have to order that. I didn't have it in, I wanna go wheeling. So I'm gonna put this in place for now. I have put the passenger side arm on. Super easy, you saw me just tap it on. Just tap it in. With a uh, dead blow. Both pieces are seated all the way, flush. I put the clamping bolts in right here, tighten those up, and the grease fitting on this end. Something a little bit different than I've seen in previous model sway locks are these locking rings right here. Once we get it centered, we'll use these, put them right up against the edges right here on both sides, and we'll clamp those in place. And that'll keep the sway bar from moving side to side. Pretty cool concept. Makes the installation a lot easier. One thing I want to know is if you didn't read the directions was when you're installing these, you want to leave these blocks loose until you get the bar inserted on both sides evenly. At that point, then you can go ahead and bolt these up and get them pretty much done and torqued down. I'm going to move forward with the install, but I wanted to make sure you guys understood. Leave these loose until this bar is completely installed on both sides. It's going to make it a whole lot easier. All right, so a little tip on this install. You can see a lot of these pieces, uh, arms, they are um, slotted like this. That's so that once they're installed on the arms and the uh, clamping bolts are through, you can tighten them down. Offers relief so that when you tighten it, it'll clamp on there really well. To make things a little easier for the install, you can take a chisel like I do, tap it in between there. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Look at that, it's right on there. So then I just tap it out. It's already tight now, so it's not gonna come back off either. Okay, I'm gonna stop right quick and give you a demonstration of how exactly the sway lock locking mechanism here works. As you can see, I got both bars inserted inside of each other and both arms on. I haven't put the clamping bolts on yet, but I will in a second. And this right here is the lever, which disconnects basically from the firm rate mode to what I would call the soft rate mode or off-road mode. 
So just flipping it right here, you can see this guy right here goes back and forth. And when this happens, so that's gonna lock, disengage this arm from this arm. And basically at that point, then we're only operating on this outside part or outer arm, which is connected to the sway bar link. And that arm is now connected to the inner torsion bar. I know it sounds pretty complicated. It's hard to follow, but trust me, it'll make more sense off road. I can't even like twist these at this point independently, like say on a Rubicon, because they are still connected through a torsion bar. All that means is we're gonna have a lot more flexibility off road while maintaining some stability. So as you can tell by the way this locking mechanism works, you basically don't have to be on level ground to get the sway bar to go back into the firm rate mode or on-road mode, whatever you want to call it. Unlike the other models, well, at least say quick disconnects where you had to get the Jeep level again and get them reconnected, you're just going to flip that lever. And as soon as you start driving and those two arms line back up, that lever is going to lock back in and you're going to get your firm rate mode back. Really cool feature. It's what really draws people to this setup. It gets you off-road faster and on-road faster. All right, one of the other many cool features about this kit is the adjustability of the sway bar links themselves. What I mean by that is these actually come in several different pieces in the kit to make the links whatever length you need them to be. There's a few pieces of all thread in the kit. They come like this, threaded on both ends. And then you just put the all thread in there, screw the links in, whatever length you need, put the Himes in them and bolt it up. It's a very awesome feature. Instead of having to have a bunch of different length of sway bar links to mount to the axle and the sway lock, you just put together what you need, toss the other ones aside. Start going hard driver if you can, yeah. Hard driver, keep coming. Oop, tail light. What? Tail light. I broke the tail light? Like road broke? That pretty much covers all the different ways to disconnect your sway bar or ways to get great flex with an aftermarket sway bar. For more great videos on wheeling, click here. Like to get flexible? Sorry. <laughs>